This is another quite ridiculous story. And I'm going to tell you, the failure to me when it comes to the foster care system and there shouldn't be any kids in the foster care system is usually a failure of the biological mother, biological father. That's where these things start. These children should never end up in the hands of somebody like this. Let me give you guys the details so y'all can hear what happened and just see how absolutely ridiculous this story is. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I'm getting this story from IndyStar.com. So thank you for the article. So this is Indiana News. Let me get, oh my God, ooh wee. Let me see, do I need to make this bigger on the screen? I think I will, I'm gonna have to. Cause I need y'all to understand the gravity of this story. No pun intended gravity mm. a northern indiana foster parent not even biological parent foster parent has been charged with reckless homicide for the death of 10 year old T dakota levi stevens dakota levi stevens was only 10 years old porter county sheriff's office announced on friday the individual that you guys see on the right hand side of the screen her name is jennifer wilson and she's 348 pounds. I, I mean, she's 48 years old of Valparaiso and was arrested for the following day in Barron County, Michigan, just north of Indiana border, authorities said. Reckless homicide, a, a, a level five felony, is punishable by up to six years in prison. Wait till y'all hear this. That is a big stankin' ass woman, Jesus. This little boy, 10-year-old boy Dakota, was rushed to the hospital on April 25th after an argument with Wilson, who the Department of Children's Services placed with Wilson about a month earlier. She didn't even have this baby boy 30 days. Wilson told police that Dakota ran away earlier that day and she brought the boy home after finding him at a neighbor's house. After they got home, Dakota was acting up, quote unquote, and threw himself to the ground outside of Wilson's house, according to a probable cause affidavit. Wilson said she was lying on the boy's body to keep him under control while she called his caseworker. Move this on the screen. Yes, she sat on him. Her net weight is 340. Three. Hundred and forty. She could probably pass for a good. Might as well just just rounded it out to four hundred. Four hundred. She the boy ran away because clearly he didn't want to be there. She took this boy. She didn't care about him. She only took him to collect benefits off of him, which we call that hashtag babies for benefits. She clearly didn't give a shit about this kid. And she wanted to control him and force him to stay there so allegedly she could keep her benefits, right? So she lied, she sat on the boy. Oh, sh excuse me. She was lying on him. This 10 year old little bitty boy. How, how much did they say she weighed? 340 fucking pounds. I'm six foot three, 270. If she sat on me as a grown man, 
I might not have survived that, let alone a 10 year old boy. She was lying on the boy's body to keep him under control while she called his caseworker allegedly. Dakota screamed and eventually stopped moving. At first, Wilson told police she thought the boy was faking. But when she rolled over all of, uh, but when she rolled him over, his eyelids were pale. Wilson told investigators she was on top of the boy for five minutes. Oh my God. I can guarantee you ain't no man that ever even laid in bed with this woman for five minutes and lived to tell about it, let alone her sitting on a little bitty child, a little bitty baby, a little foster baby, a foreign child. Being this wide, she's wider than all outside. Look, they took a picture from far back. That is a far back picture and she still barely fit in that picture. Huh? The little boy Dakota was only 91 pounds and this woman is 340. 340? How do you even get to be 340? God damn. <sighs> Wilson looked visibly distraught when police arrived at her house at about at, in the 200 block of Falcon Way in Valparaiso, according, or Valpo. I can't really pronounce that name correctly, Valparaiso, according to the affidavit. The boy who had spent the last five years of his life moving through different foster homes was not breathing and had no pulse. Dakota was airlifted from Porter Memorial Hospital to South Bend, where he was taken off life support two days later. Doctors found swelling in the boy's brain consistent with oxygen deprivation for an extended period of time. He was pronounced dead two days later, so that five minutes was probably a damn lie. She squeezed the life out of him. The St. Joseph County Coroner's Office later ruled the boy's death as a homicide. Dakota died from mechanical asphyxia, or excuse me, mechanical asphyxia. A kind of asphyxiation in which an object or physical force stops someone from breathing. A 20 second clip from ring video cameras showed Wilson lying across Dakota's neck and head area as the boy screamed, oh my God. You know what? After this video, I'm going to go to Best Buy sometime this week. And I'm going to go buy a ring, R-I-N-G. I'm going to buy ring products. I have Blink, but I think I'm going to go buy ring. Because ring seems to be, if not for these ring cameras, doorbell cameras, recording and catching all of these people, a lot of this stuff we would not have any evidence of. Think about how many times ring cameras have caught drive-by shootings, ring cameras have caught child abuse, ring cameras have caught this woman in a 20 second clip and it showed her lying across the boy's neck and head area. Pretty much she sat her P-H-A-T-A-Z-Z -Z, stinking ass self on this boy's face. That means she put her nasty, unwashed, filthy, stinking crotch and butt cheeks on top of this boy. And he probably died from the smell of old undigested cheeseburgers, cholesterol, just dead skin, and depression. He died from what he smelled. Five minutes. Yeah, right. 
Another 20 second video shows Dakota still screaming while Wilson was on top of him, her right arm and elbow planted on the ground. A third video still shows Wilson still on top of Dakota near his buttocks area, the affidavit says. The boy whose arms were above his head were no longer moving. A fourth video still shows two still, the two still in the same position with Dakota still not moving. Four videos. But yet she wants you to believe that she only sat on, only sat on him for five minutes while I make a phone call to get help. A fifth video shows Wilson on her knee facing Dakota who was face down on the ground. Wow. Dakota, Wilson screamed several times. She later asked one of her other kids to call 911. I cannot believe. I hope that that, that woman got foster kids. I sincerely hope that this woman, nobody actually procreated with that. Oh, that, that had to have been a horrible experience. That had to have been a recovering drug addict, crackhead, alcoholic, or something. They could not have been in their right mind to produce children with her, not voluntarily. She said, and I quote, I was laying on him and he was acting bad. Wilson, well, that's what they said she could be heard saying. Wilson had three other children in her house. All were adopted. I knew didn't nobody have sex with her. I knew it. I knew it. These were all adopted children, so these were not her kids. I knew it. I knew did nobody sleep with her. Nobody. No, no way. Brian Heineman, a spokesperson for DCF, DCS, said last month that Wilson's license is on hold pending revocation and no other children are currently in her home. Dakota was at least the second child involved with DCS to have died in April, which government Eric Holcomb had designated as Child Abuse Prevention Month. His death has been left questions among family members who said that they have tried unsuccessfully for several years to gain custody of the boy to remove him from the foster care system. So they made it hard for those people to remove him from the foster care system and, and take custody of him. But somebody who don't need kids and don't need no more fatty foods can get custody of this little boy. This case also raises concerns about the ability of DCS to adequately protect children who are either in the agency's care or in abusive family situations. Dakota's parents lost custody of him and his younger sister in 2018 after DCS concluded they were unable to care for the children Family members told the Indy Star. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Somebody in the chat, thank you for posting that. Brain damage begins around two to three minutes without oxygen. So, yeah, five minutes absolutely would have killed him. But I think they said they had five separate ring camera videos. To me, that sounds way longer than, than five minutes because it's recording it um, every so often. Crazy. But do me a favor, y'all hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Let's listen at the news videos. Ray and Lourdes, the foster mother of Dakota Levi Stevens, isn't yet in custody, but she is charged in his death, accused of asphyxiating him while restraining him. Home security videos show Porter County deputies on approach to make an arrest neighbors have been anticipating for nearly three months. It's sad um, for what she did and how long it's taken. Deputies had planned to take into custody the foster mother of 10-year-old Dakota Levi Stevens. <laughs> He died in April under circumstances that weren't clear at the time, but prosecutors now say his foster mother, Jennifer Wilson, killed him when she lay on top of him in their yard for more than eight minutes, cutting off the oxygen to his brain.
Wilson is now charged with reckless homicide, but she's not in custody because she and her brain. Wilson is now charged with reckless homicide, but she's not in custody because she and her husband for Wilson killed him when she lay on top of him in their yard for more than eight minutes, cutting off the op- Okay, you hear that? So, of course, like I said, I was right. They said for four to eight minutes. That sounds about right. For it to be able to collect five ring videos. Oxygen to his brain. Wilson is now charged with reckless homicide, but she's not in custody because she and her husband were out of town when deputies arrived. At the she's married. Oh, my God. What is she married to? Is she married to a human being? I can't imagine that. They're home. You know, my daughter seen it happen. My daughter walked by while that, that little boy was laying on the ground dying. Um, so we were hoping for some justice today and it didn't happen. Court records show Wilson told deputies during an interview that Dakota was acting out. He'd run away to a neighbor's house accusing his foster parents of hitting him and he refused to get out of the car when Wilson brought him home. She restrained him on the ground with her body. In those records, a description of what happened over the course of five doorbell videos that captured the incident. The first two deputies say show Dakota screaming underneath Wilson's weight, her body positioned near his head and neck. In the next three videos, he doesn't move. The documents say Wilson asked Dakota if he was ready to get up and are you faking? Realizing something was wrong, she asked one of her other children to call 911 and can be heard saying, I was laying on him and he was acting bad. Yeah, he had his behaviors and we did have to put him in some holds, but it wasn't like we weren't sitting on him. We weren't physically like on top of him. Dakota's former foster father says he was taught how to safely calm the little boy. And then just hold him like a bear hug. And then literally when we do that, he just he would he would be upset for a minute and then he'd like melt in your arms. And that's what he needed at the time. Dakota's extended family says they'd almost given up hope they'd see accountability. I felt grateful that due diligence had been done and that justice will be served. But at the end of the day, the, the it doesn't bring happiness because he's still gone. He was just a kid given given a bad hand, but he made the best of every situation. Prosecutors tell us Wilson is not considered a flight risk and they expect her to turn herself in in the coming days in North. Flight risk? Where's she going to fly to? She, she can't be allowed on a plane. What? An investigation is underway into the death of a 10-year-old boy in Porter County, Indiana. Family members telling WGN News he had been in foster care at the time. The boy's aunt tells WGN's Angelica Sanchez they're frustrated by a lack of answers from authorities. Relatives of the 10-year-old boy contacted our newsroom as they are desperate for answers. They tell us that they are hearing concerning stories over how the child passed away and that they are only seeking the truth into what happened. This was, I believe, his sixth birthday right here. According to his maternal aunt, 10-year-old Dakota Levi Stevens was a creative child. He was wonderful. Wonderful doesn't even cover it. Fascinated by trains, cars, and the outdoors. And he loves to bug hunt, and he would tell all the bugs when he caught them, don't worry, I'm your Uncle Levi, I'm going to take care of you. Photographs are all she has left of him. At this time, she wishes to conceal her identity, but she does want to shine a spotlight on her nephew's death while he was under foster care. We have not heard anything from police. The last time she saw him was in 2019. She says Dakota's mother was unable to care for him and his father passed away in 2021. According to Porter County Sheriff's Police, last Thursday, deputies were called out to the 200 block of Falcon Way for a medical emergency. A 10-year-old juvenile was taken by ambulance to a hospital where he passed away. According to the medical examiner, no autopsy results are available and they could take up to 60 days. It's beyond heartbreaking. In a statement to WGN, Indiana's Department of Child Services says our entire staff is heartbroken by this news. DCS works with stakeholders and partners across the state to investigate the death of a child anytime there is suspected abuse or neglect and will take the appropriate action. DCS foster parents must complete intensive training and education to achieve licensure. I agree with that. Somebody in the chat said the family shouldn't even be talking. They should have fought for custody. I hear you on that. But from what I understood, from what I read, it sounded like they had been trying to get custody. But why did they make it so hard for them to get custody? Just, I don't know. But they were just hell-bent on giving this woman more kids. 
licensure is re-examined each year to ensure foster family continues to meet DCS requirements, including additional training each year to maintain this license. DCS policy also addresses termination of licensure, which includes circumstances where a foster parent or member of the household has been substantiated for abuse or neglect. Now the family's next steps is to hire an attorney. They tell me they've already made several calls reporting in Porter County. And somebody in the chat said it, they better not put up a damn GoFundMe. And I 100% agree. So y'all been watching me for a while because that's usually what happens. The family who didn't have this boy, didn't have custody of him, lost custody of him, all of a sudden now want to get funding for GoFundMe. No, pull it out your pockets. If it mattered, pull it out your own pockets. Like you want to, you know, basically accumulate funds off the back of a dead child. And I just think that that's wrong on every level. So, yes, I agree. Thank you for calling that out. What happened to Dakota Stevens? He was a vibrant 10-year-old boy with a sparkle in his eye. He moved from foster home to foster home. But Dakota ran into trouble just last Thursday afternoon. Police were called to the 200 block of Falcon Way in Liberty Township. It was a call of some kind of a medical emergency. Dakota did not survive. Tonight, NBC5's Everard Casme spoke with someone who loved Dakota very much. But yeah, I'm really going to miss, you know, the conversations that we had, his his will for adventure. That's what Hayden Hetzel will miss the most about his former foster son, Dakota Stevens. The 10 year old died after a call for a medical emergency here on Falcon Way in Valparaiso, Indiana, back on April 25th. Hetzel wants to know what happened. My stomach's been in a knot ever since. This little boy, anybody, anybody whose lives he came into, he just touched their hearts and like instantly everybody fell in love. Hetzel uh, was Dakota's foster parent from 2019 out. till 2022 before he was placed in a different foster home. He tells us the boy had no known medical issues. A spokesperson from the Indiana Department of Child Services released a statement that reads in part, our entire staff is heartbroken by this news. DCS works with stakeholders and partners across the state to investigate the death of a child anytime there is suspected abuse or neglect and will take the appropriate action. 10 year old patient, not conscious, not breathing, CPR initiated. Neighbors tell NBC5 News they're shocked. That's crazy, like it should not happen, something needs to happen. The system failed him epically, like it's unreal, like how bad the, the system just failed him. Hetzel tells us he's in mourning. He tattooed Dakota's initials on his leg in hopes of adopting him one day. Now it's a reminder of a little boy gone too soon. You know what they say, um, blood doesn't make a family, love does. There are still a lot of unanswered questions tonight. We reached out to the coroner's office for an exact cause of death and to investigators to find out if anyone could face charges. We have not heard back. In Valparaiso, Evrod Kasimi, NBC5 News. At the end of the day, this boy's biological mother and biological father failed him. He shouldn't have had to be in the system to be moved around that much. That last guy, I don't really know why he didn't continue to keep custody of him. I'd definitely like to know the answer to that. But for this, for her to do that, like you can't be that level of dumb. And I think that her only punishment should be a life sentence. She gave this boy a life sentence, give her a life sentence. That's the only thing that seems to make sense. I have no remorse for people who do stuff like this. That was just evil and cruel. And it was just, oh my God, just, I couldn't even imagine people having to watch that on the ring camera. And, and and probably going to have to show that to jurors and the judge and traumatize all of those people. I think that that woman deserves a life sentence. So I'll say this to Dakota Young Prince, RIP. And he deserves so much better from his own damn family. Thank you guys for listening to this story. And hopefully that we can get some justice for him. Don't support any GoFundMes that pop up from anybody at all. Anybody, anybody connected to this story, if they put up a GoFundMe, I'm asking y'all not to support it. Put my stamp on that, okay? Thank you.